So, where do I begin? If you've just downloaded Roastmaster for iOS, you're probably thinking, how do I get started? Hi, I'm Danny Hall. Thanks for joining me for this screencast. Today, I'm going to walk you through your first roast with Roastmaster. So, here we are at Roastmaster's home screen. Now, you may at this point be thinking I'm going to take you on a, a feature tour and show you what it can do, but that's not what this tutorial is about. What we're going to do is just jump right in. So, press the roast button, and here we have our first roast. Now, if you've been using Roastmaster for a while, you'll have your database already configured with everything in it. You'll probably have a big library of beans, um, possibly some blends, hopefully a lot of cuppings that you've been keeping good track of. But right now we have nothing. So we could go and set things up first, put all of our inventory in, um, our bean vendors, uh, make sure our countries are there that we want. Um, but what we're going to do instead is just start the roast and worry about the details as we go. Before we actually begin the roast, though, I want to take just a second and introduce you to the roasting console. The roasting graph here is designed to show you roast data, not only data from your current roast, but also that from all of your past roasts as well, superimposed on top of your current data. Now, this operates in either one of two modes. You can use the benchmark mode, in which case you manually choose the data to display, or you can use the automatic mode, in which case you tap criteria buttons and instruct Roastmaster which roast to find based on the attributes of the current roast. In this case, we can see that we've roasted this bean in this roaster with this profile 13 times. Now, if you want to get a better view of that data, you can launch the roast analyzer. The analyzer gives you not only a clear view of this data, but lets you pan through it and hopefully see patterns that emerge based on crack times, durations, uh, curve data, but also, more importantly, the actual cupping data from the cuppings that you've created based on these roasts. For instance, with this, we can see that typically the longer we roast this bean, the better we like it. So that might help us um, make on-the-fly decisions as we go about how we want to change our roast based on what we're seeing happening with the cupping data. Now, the roasting gauge actually looks at the, the, the past roast data being displayed in the graph and uses that data to calibrate its needle and give you an idea of the level of completion of the current roast. It operates in three different modes, the first of which is standard clock time from 0 to 30 minutes. The second is roast degree target mode, in which case you choose a roast degree to target and it will calibrate its needle to that roast degree. The third is crack matching mode, in which you choose either first or second crack, and it will calibrate its needle to the estimated time that those two milestones will occur. So, enough of the brief introduction, let's go ahead and get the roast underway. As we drop the beans in our roaster, we'll press the start button here in Roastmaster, and our roast is underway. So the first thing we'll do is tap the curve button here. We want to create a new curve, and in this case a reading curve, to hold the temperatures that we read from the bean mass throughout the roast. So we'll set the name, which in this case is already set, bean mass temp. Verify that we have a reading curve set and that we're working in the proper measurement system, in this case it's Celsius. Go ahead and save, and we can see over here in the curve info area that we have some feedback now. We are showing a bean mass temp curve, and we have a red ring around the curve button, and the temp is displaying in red, showing you that a red curve is selected. Now you can, of course, set the colors of each curve as you'd like, but let's go ahead and get some data in here. So we'll tap the digital readout, and type in 220. That was the temp that we dumped the beans at, and we have our first node. Now we're coming up on a minute, so we're gonna try to keep nodes happening every minute. Go ahead, tap another node, and we observed 135.9, and we have the second node, and you can see the curve starting to take a little shape. Now, to backtrack a little bit, the first node you enter in a curve as a roast is in progress is gonna come in at zero seconds. Gives you a way to anchor the beginning of the curve at the start of the roast. 
any subsequent node you enter is going to come in time stamped at the time you enter it. So we're at 135.9 now. If we were working with multiple curves, we could tap the graph here and select through each one in succession. Uh, when you get to the end of the list, no curve is selected, but you still see outlines of all of your curves. This gives you a, an easy way to look at the data of past rows that the graph is displaying and get a clear overall picture of what's happening. Now, in this case, we don't have any data, but we're fixing that here in our first roast. And when we're done this one, we'll start to see some good stuff happen in future rows. So tap again for our two minute mark. We're at 130.3. And here we have the, the typical drop that occurs in the beginning of a roast. It starts to build up some heat in the beans. It'll cycle back upwards. And now that our curve's all set up, let's go ahead and put our roasted items in. Today, that's just going to be one bean, Guatemala, Antigua. So the first thing we need to do is put the roast console into edit mode. Tap the edit button, and then we can tap select new item. Select an item, and we'll define our first bean. Tap the plus button, and we have our first bean record. We'll set the country to Guatemala. Now, Roastmaster defines pretty much all the countries you probably need in every new database. So you shouldn't have a need to add countries, but you of course can rename the ones that are there. You can add notes or ratings, or you can of course add new countries if you like. So identifiers, and we see that Roastmaster breaks it down into name, grade, estate, and variety. You can track these separately if you'd like, but there's no real need to. It pretty much just treats these four fields as one long string in all areas of the app anyway. So Antigua is our bean name, and we're gonna say we have five pounds of this on hand. And let's give it some notes. We'll say this is um, bright and balanced. Um, light body, but big taste. And we'll give it a rating of five stars. Hit save, and we can now choose this bean and set the roasted weight to 200 grams. Hit save, and exit edit mode. Now, let's take a look really quick at this bean record we just created. We set it at five pounds. Now we can see we're down to 4.559 pounds. That, of course, is Roastmaster's automatic inventory tracking. And if you're faithful and use Roastmaster for every roast, you will find that Roastmaster's inventory will stay perfectly synced with your actual stock on hand. Very handy. Um, okay, we've missed two nodes now talking. We're soon to miss a third. So let's show you how to manually edit node data. Now most of the editing you're going to be doing to curves is going to occur here in the roasting console, but it is certainly possible to go into the curve itself and add nodes or change node data. In this case, we need to add one for three minutes at 145.3. We need one at four minutes, 162.7. And we need one at five minutes, 178.7. Yes, of course, I have a little cheat sheet here. Done, back to Rose details, and we can see we're now caught up. So let's uh, break for a second and we'll come back when it's time for the cracks. All right, we've just heard the first snaps of first crack on the roaster. So let's go ahead and enter that data into Roastmaster. Go over here and tap the first crack button and you'll see that we're left with a marker on the roasting graph signifying the start of first crack. Now you can track a range of time for both first and second crack by just waiting until the cracks have ended and tapping that appropriate crack button again and you will be 
shown a range of times rather than just a single point, but we're going to keep it simple and track just a point in time and go and enter our next node for our bean mass curve, which at 7 minutes will be 206.8. And we'll sit here and patiently wait for a second crack. Okay, now we're starting to hear the sizzle of second crack. So let's go ahead and enter that data. And this is about as far as we go for this rose. We're going to pull it right now very shortly after second crack. We don't want to go too long with this central beam. Um, of course, just pressing the start stop button to signify the end of the roast. And we have our first completed roast in Roastmaster. Thanks for taking the time to view this screencast. If you have any questions or would like to get in touch with us, go to www.rainfryginc.com.